Hello and welcome to another Goblin TV tutorial. In today's tutorial we're going to be painting a Iron Hands character from start to finish. This is going to be a very long tutorial so please go get comfortable, get yourselves nice and settled in and we'll get started with a tutorial. I start off by priming the minutes using Alclad 2's Lacquer Primer Black. There's a few things that are important to note with Alclad primers. First of all, you need to be very well ventilated if you're actually using these primers. Make sure you're wearing a respirator and you're well ventilated. The other thing to note is that it's known as a hot liquid. What this means is that lesser quality airbrushes would be damaged by this primer. You need to have an airbrush with PTFE solvent proof seals to use this airbrush um, primer. Here I'm priming with the Alclad at about 20 psi and I'm working about 4 to 5 inches away from the miniature and I'm just getting a nice smooth even coverage all over. Now we're going to create some highlights using Vallejo Model Air Medium Gunship Grey. With the highlights I'm aiming for the central panels of all of the armour plates on the Iron Hands character. And as you can see I'm just building up the grey slowly. We don't want to add too much grey to the miniature as it all spoil all the shadows that we're going to be left behind with the black primer base coat. Now I'm going to airbrush some Vallejo Game Air dead white onto the bolt gun on the top of his backpack. It's important to note with Iron Hands that on all of their bolt guns they have um, white armour plating uh, surrounding the bolt guns so this is why I decided to airbrush the Vallejo Game Air dead white. Now we're going to create some highlights on the minutes using Vallejo Game Air Silver. We're going to be dry brushing. Now it's very crucial when dry brushing that you use the correct brush. 
I'm using a army paint, a small dry brush here, but you can use other brands of uh, brush. But it needs to be a flat headed brush and you need to remove almost all of the paint on some paper towel. So you're getting no paint on the paper towel at all. It's really crucial using this bright silver color that there's not too much paint on the bristles when you're dry brushing as we only want to catch the extreme edges of all of the armor panels. All of the metallics on the Iron Hands miniature are going to be painted with Vallejo metal colour gunmetal grey with a tiny little bit of Vallejo game air silver mixed in. As you can see this paints absolutely beautifully on the miniature and gives one coat coverage.
Now we're going to wash the miniature, but we're going to be selectively washing the miniature, picking out areas where we want deeper shadows. I'm going to be using Norn Oil with a very, very tiny amount of Leo Game Air Black added to the mix. So roughly four drops of Norn Oil to one drop of Leo Game Air Black. And I'm just picking out areas where I think a deeper black would look nice on the miniature, but we're still leaving that gray behind on all of the top surfaces of the armor panels. Now we're going to paint the haft of the weapon using Games Workshop's Corn Red. I'm using the Air Variety, but you can use a standard paint, it doesn't really matter. The base of the miniature is going to be painted with Games Workshop Sandry Dust. Games Workshop's Droochy Violet is going to be washed on all the red areas of the miniature, so at the moment it's just the haft of the weapon. The logo of the Iron Hands is quite obviously a hand and we're going to be using Vallejo Game Air Wolf Grey to paint the insignia. The reason we use Wolf Grey is it looks almost white in its colour but it covers much better than white. So a top tip is to use Vallejo Game Air Wolf Grey to paint all your white insignias.
here I'm using the mix that I made earlier of the Norn Oil and the Vallejo Game Air Black to wash all the metallics on the miniature. Games Workshop's layer paint Wild Rider Red is going to be dry brushed onto the haft of the weapon. Again it's very crucial that you remove most of the paint from the bristles of the brush on some paper towel and only ever so lightly brush backwards and forwards onto the haft of the weapon and this way you'll catch just the extreme top surface of the detail and you'll leave all the darker colours in the recesses. There was a purity seal on the Iron Hands character and we're going to use Seraphin Sepia to wash the purity seals that was initially base coated using Zandri Dust. Here I'm painting using Games Workshop's Kislev Flesh and I've watered it down 3 to 1. It's a very very thin paint mix and I paint in about 3 or 4 thin layers. It's really crucial when painting faces that the paint is really thin and you paint in several thin layers to get the most smooth even coverage you can. Now we're going to be using the Army Flake painters flesh wash which I personally think is way better than Games Workshop's flesh wash equivalent. It works really well and as you can see instantly it's adding lots of shade to that miniature. The metallics look really dull after adding that wash so we're going to bring them back up to a nice bright finish on the extreme edges using a dry brush of Vallejo Game Air Silver. The base of the miniature is going to be washed with Games Workshop's Agrax Earthshade.
Now we're going to dry brush the base using Games Workshop's layer paint, Shabti Bone. And here we have our finished miniature. I really hope you enjoyed the tutorial today. And if you did, please hit the subscribe button. Like the video if you liked it. And even better still, leave a comment and let us know what tutorials you would like to see in future. Okay, I just want to thank all of you for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. And we'll catch you in the next one on Goblin TV.